Hey, Steve Basic Architect, live from Commerce, Georgia. Today, we're bringing the build show to you from Huber Engineered Woods OSB plant. We're making Advantech today. Let's go see how it's done. Just so happens that I got my good friend Will King here. Will King's the owner of High Cotton Homes, and for those of you that pay attention on the build show, Will's a recent contributor, so go check out all his videos. But uh, we're down here in Georgia. We've been invited down, me, Will, and a, a handful of other builders, my good friend Peter Yost, um, coming down here, and we're gonna check out some of the things, the way Zip gets made, the way Advantech gets made in this video. But we're starting here in the uh, innovation lab. You can see behind me pretty much all of Huber's displays that you see at their typical trade show. But the really cool thing about coming down to the innovation lab and, and to the labs and mill is not only do we get to see like how the secret sauce gets, you know, implemented and how things get made, but we get to see, you know, the, the future. Like everybody in this building doesn't really live in reality, right? They're all working on the things that we're gonna see in five or six years or whatever. The, the, the beauty of having your own innovation and research development here is that we get to talk to people, they get to talk to people like Will that's out here using their products every day and, uh, and say, hey, what is it that you like? What do you think we could do better? What are the, what are the nuisances of our product? And, and how can we take that and close the loop on it and make it a little bit better? So everybody that we're meeting, everything that we're we're looking at here today when we go over to the lab and such is stuff that we're going to see in the product line in years to come. You know, the stuff that we see out there now when you go to the lumber yard, this is stuff these guys were talking about five, ten years ago, and now it's a mainstream product. So, I don't know, Will, you want to yeah. just take a quick walk down here and talk about your experience with using Zip? Absolutely. I mean, it's awesome just to see the guys behind the scene that are trying to make our job better and easier, right? But one thing that I thought was really neat here is that they have the, uh, even the 3D printer to make all the prototypes rapidly they're talking about. And then some of the recent changes they've done to the Advantech panel, they were able to, I guess, quickly replicate it here till they get to the point where they can put it in production. So seeing that they have that kind of technology here to just make it that fast, you just uh, make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could imagine if, if you wanted to change the profile, say, on Advantech, right, it would literally take, you know, days to go up to the mill, get the jig to change, and do all of this stuff to be able to take two pieces together, stick them together, and say yes or no, right? So having that 3D printer, you can print those profiles, get a quick yes or no, and then move on in an hour. Just that so fast. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. And when you come down here, you know, they have all their kind of cast the characters, all the different zips, liquid flash, roll the tape. Do not forget to roll the tape. <laughs> you know, they have the perfect tape installation here for viewing. So if you're looking for that benchmark of what it should like look like, that's what it should look like. You know, the green stuff, they have a bunch of different assemblies using the liquid flash here. I mean, they take care of you. They uh, they have all the guns, and I'm sure Will, you guys have your whole, you know, all your guys have all the equipment. Yeah, yeah I'm sure we're gonna pick some right. more up here today too of other tips and tools that they're using. But how about the um, Advantech, the strength test here, actually showing the deflection of other, com I guess, other uh, yeah. sheet goods in comparison to the Advantech. Actually seeing it on a, a screen showing the deflection is pretty neat. Yeah, it's one thing to like hear somebody say, hey, it's this is stronger than all the other ones, but when you put it to the test here and then you show it and illustrate it, it really brings a lot of this stuff, you know, to the forefront. And as, as builders and architects, you know, we, we take a lot for granted that, hey, these guys know what they're doing. We buy their products, respect their products, and we trust in their products. But Here's why. <laughs> this is the why. Yeah, I think it's great that you can come down here and, you know, the company takes the time to say, hey, we're not only just telling you, we're proving it to you. Check this mm -hmm. out and, uh, you know, have, have, go check it, yeah. check more out. So, Well, I'm excited to get to the mill because 
not only do we get to see the pretty stuff here, but actually how it's made is what we're going to see next. So yeah, and it's that's I, gonna be fun. I've been on the, the mill tour a couple times, but it's just like you start on this side of the building and there's a pile of logs and you end up on this side of the building and it's lifts of zip and advantech all wrapped and being loaded onto so a truck. Seeing the whole and process. And you get to see the whole process in between. So anyways, let's uh, depart here. We'll go up to the lab and uh, a few other places and uh, we'll continue our tour. All right, so we're out here at the mill. The mill's behind us, but before we go into the mill and even talk about that, one of the things that Huber does, and Huber does pretty well, is that they have little test facilities all over the place. Now, I mean, you and I fight it all the time, Will. You're on Instagram, you post something, somebody says, oh, I don't trust the tape. Oh, I don't trust this. Oh, like, absolutely. Like the company doesn't know what they're doing or, yeah. or doesn't take the time to get a better understanding of what they're doing. So this is just a, a fine example of, hey, Let's find out how some of our stuff performs, right? Yeah. And so Danko, who's the chief uh, building scientist at Hubert, he just gave us a quick explanation, but wanted to run you by this. So this is a trailer. It's got six stucco panels on this side. This is the north side. We got six stucco panels on the back side facing due south. And inside, there's a whole bunch of wires and stuff where they're collecting data. But basically what they're doing here is they're injecting moisture into these wall panel systems at different intervals and quantities. And then they're testing these wall panels to see how do they dry out, which walls perform better. You know, some of these walls have different assemblies. Some of them have rain screens. Some are tight to the sheathing that, you know, are code built assemblies. So. I thought it was interesting too, Steve. These are actually, this one's facing north. So not only are they testing the assembly and the product, but they're also putting it in real world conditions, not just, not even, you know, not, we're obviously in a Southern climate, so hot, humid climate, but they're also facing it North to make sure that, you know, the drying potential, depending on how it's oriented, they're testing off all realms of this, I guess, assembly to get yeah. real data. So it's not just a one-sided test, I think's the way to point that out. So I thought that was really neat to, because you can see the mold growth here on the, on yeah, the panels, on the north side north, here, and as, as we typical. go down, mm -hmm. yeah, you can see it. So, yeah, anyways, there's still a lot more to come in the video here, but, you know, kudos to uh, Huber. They take their testing live out here and build real-world stuff. So, it's, uh, you stuff, know, before man. it gets to you, they get a little better understanding yep. of what they're doing. And this has been going on for how long, they said? Three years? I, yeah, four three years? or four years here. So, so they're and in that three or four years, yeah. they're just about to start collecting data. Yeah. So this has been going on, you know, for a while. So awesome. All, all, right. all good stuff. All right. So you saw us talking about on the outside. I jumped inside. We dropped Will off because we had to get the brains behind the operation. So Danko, who's the chief building scientist here at Huber Corporation, this is one of his babies, right? He he handles all the kind of technical information related to Zip and all the, the Huber family products there. So tell us a little bit about what's happening on the inside here, Danko. Okay, big boy. They're like one big boy, one small boy, two small brains and one big brain in the middle between two of us. So actually, this is the major central station that gets all the information from the sensors, both from the wolf and roof assemblies, transferred here, stored, so I can come up in my laptop and harvest the data every two months. Uh, this side particularly collects all the data from the wall assemblies. On the other side of the disk column is like the same setup. It collects all the data from the roof assemblies. So what we're collecting here, every wall assembly, roof assembly has around dozen senders that measures like moisture content, temperature relative, humidity, and various strategic locations in the assembly. Mostly back side of the sheeting, front side of the sheeting, middle of the cavity, and against the dry wall. So. so when we see something like this, Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. All of these go into the wall. So these are all going to some type of sensor that's monitoring humidity, temperature. Correct. And now that information comes in here and gets mm -hmm. put into this board. So it goes to that punch down block, which transfers all these wires. If you look at all the roof, like all the wires come And then that here. comes over here. So yeah. this is the main filing cabinet. Exactly. Where all the information, so you come here, you tap the filing cabinet, Correct. you get your data. And we're not only doing the walls here, we're also doing these roof assemblies, right? Correct. So a lot of these wires you can see 
they're coming out of the roof here, that information is going into this board too. And just like the outside, we have the moisture injection tubes on the inside so we can inject that moisture into these wall panels. And again, south orientation, north orientation. Exactly, so. the primary purpose of these water injecting tubes is to simulate the water leak and assembly is how these wall assemblies respond to these accidental scenarios. And actually right now I'm in the process of injecting this water twice a day to simulate the summertime leak conditions. I'm gonna monitor how these walls dry out like over the next like 30, 45 days was to have like warm weather. Gotcha. And I'm gonna repeat the same exercise in the winter time too. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, there you have it. It doesn't get much better. We got the chief building scientist from Huber here talking about chief science happening out here at Huber. So let's continue our tour. All right, so we're starting a tour of the mill. And you can see over here, this is what they call the log yard. You got trucks coming in. Obviously, we got this massive crane that in about two to three bites unloads each truck. Now, for this mill to operate successfully, they need about 100 trucks a day to come through here. They operate at five days a week on trucking, so they get about 120 truckloads a day. That gets them six days of work in the log yard here. You can see all that wood behind me. I'm told is about six days worth of work. And in that six days or each of these truckloads that come in, that 100 days or 120 truckloads a day that comes in, that is worth about 60 trucks going out every day. So it's about a two to one ratio from raw material coming in to product going out the back door. So anyways, we're gonna jump out on the tour, but it's always cool to see the log yard. We're pretty much at the highest point, other than being at the crane, at the mill. You can see we have the log yard. You see all the trucks out there, all lined up, ready for unloading. It's just a consistent operation all day long. Crane unloads it, puts it out into the log pile, but the crane is also responsible for taking the logs that came in a few days ago, and they put them up on this loading bed here. You can see down below, and then the loading bed has a series of elevators where it separates them. It brings them up and drops it down onto this conveyor belt. This conveyor belt then feeds the logs. They go down through here, and you can see down here, they get fed into a machine. Now, what's happening inside there is a fine example of what's over on the right-hand side. So basically, things are getting debarked there. They go through there. That machine spins around, takes off about 90% of the bark. And then you can see on the other side, the log gets split, spit out, and then dumped into the pile. It gets ready for processing as a deep bark tree. So just really cool operation from up here. All right, so we got to see some processes, some processes we can't really uh, talk about at the mill, but there was a grinding machine there, the wafer, the wafer goes, goes through a series of drying, blending, all this good stuff. But ultimately, it comes down through a series of channels here, and this is where they make what's called the mat. And the mat is, you know, this mat of wafers that starts at about eight or 10 inches, and it gets compressed to the three quarter inch depth of or thickness of Advantech that we're gonna be making here today. You can see over there, the mat, a certain amount of strands get dropped here, and then there's a topping strand. The topping strands are a little larger, and they get placed at the top of the mat in a different orientation, and that's how the OSB gains its strength. That's why it's called oriented strand board and not random strand board, because there is intention in the way the strands get layered and how they get oriented to generate its strength. So. You can see the beginnings of the mat. We're gonna go down there and we're gonna talk about how we take this eight or 10 inch mat and get it down to the three quarter inches that we know is advantage. All right, so we're in the press part of the factory. This is where all the magic happens, right? We saw that eight to 10 inch mat that was coming down the line. It goes through a series of preloaders, but all the magic happens right here. You can see this press just compressed up. And basically what we're doing is taking that eight to 10 inch mat 
and making it a three quarter inch mat. So it's going to be inside this press for, I don't know, about two minutes. It's going to get injected with some steam, some pretty high temperatures. I mean, just standing here, it's about 105 degrees. So inside that press, it's uh, yeah, a lot more than that. We can't talk about a whole lot of this stuff. But anyways, that's where the magic happens. Goes from that eight to 10 inches down to three quarters of an inch. And then that's gonna drop down. And then these will, the mats will move off there. And then the mats will get processed into the finished product. So we can move on down the line and check that out. Hey, so you can't really see it that well here, but those rough panels come out. They get through a saw there. The long edges get cut. They get brought over here to an elevator. Elevator drops them down. They get cross cut there. The short sides get cut. And then the finished panel goes over here, goes down through a series of conveyors, gets cut down into the four by eight sheets that we know about. The edges get groomed for the tongue and groove. Then they get painted in the far corner there. All the logos and such get on them. But then they basically come over here, and you can see here, these are all the stacking machines where it all stockpiles the product, getting ready to ship it out. All right, so you can see the stacking machines there. They stack in three separate piles. Those piles come down, they move across the conveyor, and then they move into the paint booth. What the paint booth is doing is it's treating those tongue groove edges, right? They come out of the back side of the paint booth, and then this is where all the packaging happens. So you can see the robot up there, grabs the packaging, packages it, bands it, sends it down the line, forklift grabs it, and then we have a factory floor of Zip and Advantech that's ready to come at you so you can put your houses together. Hopefully you enjoyed this tour. Steve Basic, architect from the Build Show, down here in Georgia, watching Advantech get made.